Hey, heard you guys were looking for some yak. Well, this could be your guy right here. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another undrafted rookie free agent at wide receiver and another guy that is at least six foot three. The Raven. Raven's like, look, man, we tired of y'all talking about us saying we ain't got nothing but slot receivers. Well, guess what? Look at this. But anyway, the next um, undrafted rookie free agent that we'll be going over today is wide receiver Makai Polk uh, from Mississippi State. And just from the jump, uh, again, the yak. The yak was one of the best things that I saw from him. And with him, it, it was kind of it was weird when I was watching him because on his releases, he's a good route runner. But it was like on his releases, he wasn't like there wasn't this burst from the line all, all, from his releases. But it's like he's it's sort of like he was like a, a character in a fighting game. Like if you're playing like Street Fighter or, or Mortal Kombat or something like that, you know how you'll charge up. You charge up so you could use your special move at a certain time. For, for me, when I watch him, that's how it was with him. Because off of his release, like I said, he, he didn't look like he was really going at it all the way. But when he had the ball in his hands, that's when he used his superpower. And that yak would come into play. That speed would come into play. Because I know they, they said that he ran like about a 4.6. They said he ran a, he ran a 4.59, which is not blazing fast or anything like that. But that's the 40 time. But the game speed, he, he got it. He got it. Um, and when he got the ball in his hands, that's when you really see it. That's when you really see him take off. He has a, a really nice stride, man. He got a really nice stride. And you know, a lot of times anyway, for those, those taller receivers or those taller players, whether receiver, tight end, whatever it may be, it can be a little bit harder to really see their speed because you know with short players they like da -da 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 with their feet but them tall players they like doom 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 and they could they could be running just as fast as the smaller players but the smaller players look faster because their feet are moving faster um but anyway with him uh again route running the the, the route running was there man the route running was there the hands were there uh we're gonna get into his production in a little bit uh, but something that I also liked about him, he's not that much of an, an, an engaging blocker, uh, but he's also not afraid of contact. And that's whether, again, whether he has the ball in his hands or whether he doesn't have the ball in his hands. Now, you would think six foot three, outside receiver. Nope, you're wrong. You would think six foot three, oh yeah, they're going to just try to use him on the outside, use him for jump balls and whatnot. Wrong again, six foot three. They had this guy moving all around. They always put him in motion. They always had him at different spots at wide receiver. He was not just an outside guy. He was not just a slot guy. No, he was somebody that did a little bit of everything. They really loved him in the screen game. He was somebody that caught a, a significant amount of passes at or around or even behind uh, the line of scrimmage. Uh, but again, like we said from the beginning of this video, Yards after catch. Yak. Yak. He is very slippery. He's very slippery and wiggly for a 6'3 guy. Like when again, I told he he waits to use his superpower when he got the ball in his hand. He waits. He said, I, I, I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off. Then when that ball's in his hand, all right, it's coming out now. Here we go. Um looking at his numbers, let's look at his production, because he was in California for his first couple of years. Uh, so as a freshman in California, he played in eight games, had 19 catches, 295 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, okay, that's, that's okay. Then 2020, state of California, and, and he have, uh, he played in four games, had 17 catches, uh, one touchdown, 183 yards. I was like, oh, okay. So he, he played in less games, had about the same amount of catches, um, and had a little bit less yards and, and one less touchdown. I was like, oh. So I guess somebody whispered in his ear. They was like, Makai, look, man, Mississippi State is calling your name. If you go there, hey, trust me, your number's going through the roof. They're going to go through the roof. But I'm, I don't know what the backstory was on him transferring to Mississippi State. But it obviously <laughs> worked out when you look at the numbers and the production that literally skyrocketed. 
it not on it didn't only double it didn't only trip i think it like quadrupled it quadrupled and whatever uh times five is i don't know what the word for that is I, I, quadruple is where i'm cut off at but anyway at mississippi state <laughs> his numbers again the previous year 17 catches 183 yards one touchdown he said oh that that, what, what? that he said that's not me that's not me this is me he had he played in 13 games and he had 105 catches so again this is somebody who is used a lot uh, and and when you have 105 catches that's how you can tell like they are really trying to get you the ball because if you have 105 catches that means you had even more targets so they want the ball in your hands they trust you with the ball that shows a lot and that's big um but he had 105 catches for 1046 yards and nine touchdowns so he put up the numbers he put up the numbers now as far as the backstory as to why he was went undrafted i don't know but one thing that i would gather from this is that with the nfl you know nfl they will pull up a history on you from anywhere they will find out in fourth grade what your favorite color was in sixth grade, what your shoe size was uh, when you were in first grade. Did you go to school wearing basketball shorts or did you wear denim jeans or were you more of a khakis type of person? They will find out whatever history they can possibly find on you. But something that they also look for is consistency. So I wonder if part of the reason why uh, he went undrafted was because of the lack of consistency from his numbers. I wonder if it was a mix of the 40 time, the lack of consistency. I think it has to be more, though. It has to be something else that we just have no clue about, something that we're naive to because we've seen plenty of players to where they may have a, a quiet freshman year, a quiet sophomore year. Then all of a sudden, their junior year, they burst onto the scene and it's like, whoa, where this guy come from? And then they end up getting drafted. But I, I just, like I said, I wonder if the, uh, the lack of consistency, because again, eight games, 295 yards. Four games, 183 yards. 13 games, over 1,000 yards. That's a huge difference. And it's a good difference. Because again, he made the transfer. He made the switch to a different school from California to Mississippi State. And lit literally went off. And I, I'm, I want, again, I don't know the backstory, but I wonder if looking back, it's like, man, I should have I should have done this earlier. Or I even wonder if looking back, he's like, man, I should have stayed another year just to build up on that consistency. Or man, he, he could have just been like, you know what? I want to capitalize on this opportunity. I feel like I can really maximize this, these numbers. I can maximize coming off of this good season that I just had. Let me go for it. Let me give it a shot. So, again, now he has that shot with the Ravens, and we're going to see how it works out. He does, like the, the guys that we went over already, Devin Williams, um, Amike, Amika Amezi, um, those guys, just like him, they, they are all big guys. Now, it seems as if the Ravens, when they're looking for these bigger frame receivers at undrafted rookie free agents, they're looking not only for size, but they're looking for that skill level as well. They're looking to see what you can do once the ball is in your hands. They're looking to see uh, that e explosiveness. They're looking to see how you can contribute with Yak because it seems like that's what a lot of these guys, they have in common. They all do it their own way, but they all three that we've went over so far, they have that in common. What they do after the catch. Are they the fastest? No. Are they the biggest? Well, yeah, they, they are at least 6'3". Because, again, Makai Polk, 6'3", Amike Amezi, 6'3", Devin Williams, 6'5". So, Ravens, like, they going to be looking around like, whoa. Whoa, the cornerbacks going against them, they going to be looking around like, whoa. <laughs> Where y'all come from? So, we'll see how these guys make their mark uh, on the league. But, again, shout out to Makai Polk. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun watching him, man. Uh, and I, I had fun watching him really unlock his superpower because again he kept it in the vault and all of a sudden he got that ball and it's like all right i'm coming loose now 